tell us about InFace, Jeff, and about the abuse of InFace. Uh, a very interesting place. Um, I don't know if you noticed the other day, Google Earth uh, suddenly started displaying the InFace in 3D. And uh, so I, uh, so you can now, if you go on Google Earth, you can now see the Ent base in 3D, mm -hmm. all the buildings and everything. So I went on there and I looked at that, and oh my God, did that bring back some horrible memories. Uh, and I was talking to somebody who left the base uh, years after I did, and they reminded me of something. They said, uh, do you remember that feeling of death that hung over the base? sort of uh, this pall of, of fear, a feeling of death that ha hung over the base, and I'm sure it's still the same to some degree. In other words, you, you kind of felt threatened all the time. You felt like you were uh, under stress, under duress, terrifically stressful place. You were always being watched. And I had somebody watching me always 24 hours a day I had to have a buddy with me I had someone shining a flashlight in my face at night while I was sleeping every two hours to make sure I was still in bed I drove off of the property on a motorcycle within 30 seconds of me leaving I was being followed by an SUV that belonged to the security personnel there at the compound uh, all of the other staff were encouraged to, well, everybody was encouraged to write knowledge reports on all of the other staff. According to Rinder, Miscavige sometimes dictated what he wanted people to confess in the hole. Other times, the managers pushed one another to confess. The 50 people there all screaming at me and telling me that I've done this and I've done that. Why don't I just admit it and I stole money and I had affairs and all. I mean, all, people just literally, Tom, randomly dream up bullshit and start screaming it out. And then the mob starts going crazy like, oh, yeah, it must have been that. Oh, yeah, it must have been that. There's all sorts of written confessions that people have done and they, they read like, North Korean POW write-ups. So you couldn't step out of line. You couldn't just in confidence say something to another staff member because you knew it was going to end up uh, with an ethics report and, and then you'd have a trip to ethics, you'd have your sec checks and so forth. I had was supposed to leave on a plane and Within a few hours of the plane leaving, I was told that I couldn't leave unless I had gone on their e-meter and done a security check. And I was like, well, my mom paid, has bought me a non-refundable ticket. How am I supposed to do this? I'm supposed to leave in a couple hours. Uh, they said, well, you can't. If you do, you're going you're gonna to be subject to justice when you come back. That basically means that my position in the organization that I was, was in would be negated. Um, it meant a lot of things to when you're in the, in the C organization, a justice action is considered uh, scary. Your mail was opened, any mail from family was opened and you know make sure that uh, that they weren't you know disaffected or disinfected as we say. Um, and uh, your mail out to your family was censored, so you couldn't say anything bad. It had to be all good roads and good weather. Yeah, everything's great. Uh, it's wonderful here, and so forth and so on. And calls to family were discouraged, but uh, if you had to make a call to the family, then there was always a, uh, an ethics officer or uh, a security guard on the phone on another line, unbeknownst mm. to the person you were calling. You, they would think they were just talking to you. Really, they were talking to you, and the security person was listening in to make sure that you didn't say anything wrong. That was just the ongoing thing. And then there was the constant um, threats uh, 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 because, uh, uh, well, for one thing, you're not getting much sleep there. The last uh, two years I was there, I think I averaged four hours sleep a night. 
When I left in 2005, I was averaging three to four hours sleep a night. And in some weeks, I was putting in over 130 hour, hours a week. Extremely sleep deprived. And um, uh, uh, the food was not that good. In addition to lack of sleep, um, there's also uh, lack of proper nutrition and um, the, the meals that are being prepared there and the, the, the facilities to support the staff that are work there are very, very mediocre. They had this uh, team share system, which was something that Hubbard had devised uh, and it was supposed to give everybody uh, a, a sort of a incentive to do better. Well, the incentives were all negative. It was take away your um, uh, your your days off, your liberty days. It was uh, um, uh, take away your food, so you had to eat beans and rice, um, and, and on up to taking away your birthing, where you had to sleep under your desk. Everyone in the building spent nights in sleeping bags or on cots, staking out floor space in offices and conference rooms. I never really saw much when I went in there, other than I went in there and you could sort of smell the smell. People live here. People sleep here. So if you didn't uh, meet, meet your quota, if you non-complied with an order, then a senior or an MAA could take away one of your cards. And there were five cars. And once you'd lost your cards, you had no privileges at all. Um, you couldn't be paid. You uh, had to eat beans and rice, sleep under your desk, and so forth. And some people would lose all their cards and be in that condition for weeks or months, you know, living in very degraded conditions. 